open search as a vector database. Machine learning models have come a long way. KNN with Lucene and with open search exist for quite some time now, but the adoption rate has picked up only since the rise of the new age LLMs. ML models do not just see strings of letters, but the meaning and the context behind them. Text is converted to vectors, so the words dog and puppy have vectors that are mathematically close to each other than let's say dog and phones. Hence why the model you choose is also important. If the model do not understand the word dog, then the embeddings that it would produce will not be of good quality. A vector space is a set of vectors referred to a mathematical construct or data structure that holds the vectors created by the way of model training. The data contained in the vectors encode the semantic and the contextual relationship between the vectors. On the screen, I'm showing a two-dimensional and a three-dimensional vector space, but in reality, a model consists of hundreds and thousands of dimensions. Distance in the context of vectors is a measure of semantic closeness between the vectors. What you see here is a vector space in two dimensions with three vectors. Distance can be measured in multiple ways. The most intuitive way to calculate it is with a straight line. This is called the Euclidean distance. Another common way to measure is by the way of cosine distance. This measures the angle between the vectors. In addition to these methods, there are other ways of measuring the distance. Without going into the details, to name few, we have the L1 Manhattan, the inner product or the dot product, which are the combination of Euclidean and the cosine distance and the Hamming distance for binary vectors. Embeddings represent the data. The three concepts on your screen are the color red in the y-axis, fruit in the x-axis, and the color yellow in the z-axis. Apple will be placed within the red and the fruit dimension. Each dimension adds additional capacity. You can also add dimensions like taste and texture, etc., etc. OpenSearch as a vector database has the ability to build, store, scale, manage, and search your vectors. The enterprise content is converted using various embedding models and stored in OpenSearch. You would be using an inference call or any other batch job to call the embedding endpoints, generate the vectors, and ingest them into OpenSearch via bulk API. Traditionally, the vector embeddings are generated outside and then pushed to OpenSearch. But OpenSearch now already offers ML connectors to connect to externally hosted models. Now is a good time to also tell you that OpenSearch offers pre-trained models that can be hosted locally within OpenSearch. But please do consider using dedicated ML nodes for hosting them and not on your data nodes. Zooming in a little bit, looking at the bottom section of the slide, what is important here is the index on the search pipeline that would be used to interact with the models. And on the vector search types, we have the semantic search, the neural sparse search, the multimodal search, and the hybrid search. And the hybrid search being a combination of different types of searches. I'll show you how quick it is to get started with the semantic search and the hybrid search. And in the hybrid search, we will be combining the lexical search and the KNN search. We would be using the Amazon products Q&A public data. We would register a pre-trained model into OpenSearch, deploy the model, create an index pipeline referencing the model, and create an index to index the text data, expecting OpenSearch to convert the text into embeddings and ingest the vector itself. So I'm on my dev tools uh, on the OpenSearch dashboards. Both OpenSearch and OpenSearch dashboards are running on my local uh, via Docker on my MacBook. So the step zero is to download the data set. And this being a large uh, data set, uh, I'm only picking 5,000 records that contains this text in it for the purpose of this demo. And after we create the index, we would ingest the data uh, via our bulk API using this uh, curl command. So going to my terminal, I have already downloaded the data. I've also stripped or rather uh, taken the 5,000 records that I need and created a new data set, uh, a JSON file. And once we create the index, we would use the bulk API to ingest this data. But of course, you will have to put in your password here. Now let's register and deploy a model. For this, we use the register API with the deploy option, which would register and deploy the model in one go. And for the models, let's go to the OpenSearch documentation page and search for pre-train, which would list the pre-trained models that we have with OpenSearch. So let's use the very first sentence transformer, go to the config URL to copy the configuration. And this is the configuration that we would be using for the register API. Let's keep the, the full name. And before I run this API call, I'm also running this API call to let OpenSearch know that uh, it should allow hosting the model on my data nodes. But the recommendation, as I previously mentioned, is to host the models on the dedicated uh, ML nodes. 
better yet, you can also use the externally hosted models. For this, you could search for connectors to see the connector blueprints that we have to connect to externally hosted models. So that could be Amazon Bedrock or SageMaker or Azure OpenAI or Cohere or DeepSeek or GCP or OpenAI. So these are the different blueprints that we have so far. And now going back to the demo, so we register and deploy the model. So we get the task ID. So we use the task ID to check the status of the task. So the status is created. We wait, we give it a few more seconds to, to be completed. So the, stat, the state should be completed. That's when we know the, the model is registered and deployed. Completed. So this is our model ID. And we could also get the confirmation by going to the machine learning tab to see the list of models that are hosted on this open source cluster or connected to this open source cluster. So we already see the model here. So click on this, you can see the, the full details here. So the next step is to create the index pipeline. Pipelines usually comprise of different set of processors. In this case, we use the text embedding processor, which converts the text to embeddings from this field to this field. It requires the model ID. So we provide the model ID, the model that we registered and deployed. So we create the index pipeline that is created. We can also test the text embedding processor. So we uh, use the same model ID, we provide a text and we expect the embeddings to be generated and it is generated. So that's good news. Now let's create the index, a KNN index. The default pipeline would be the pipeline that we just created and the vector field would be the question vector of type KNN vector. Dimension would be 768 matching our model's dimension. Well, let's create it. And the next step would be to ingest the data. For this, we go back to the terminal. Remember to put in your password on the curl command for the bulk API. The indexing should be completed. Let's do a test. The documents are indexed along with the embeddings as you see here. The embeddings are also ingested. So now we do the neural search on a syntax like this. You put in the model ID here. So when you do the search here, a KNN search is happening here. So this is a traditional KNN search that you're used to. You provide the embeddings here directly and you perform the search. But in the neural search, what you have to do is just provide the text on the model ID and the embeddings are created for you. And this is the lexical search that you're probably used to already. And we can also compare the results between the lexical search and the neural search by using the search relevancy tab. And I have already opened the search relevancy tab here. You provide the lexical search here on your neural search here with the model ID and the search text uh, placeholder. And the text goes here, the search term, and you can perform the search, you can compare the results. For hybrid search, the search pipeline is used to combine the results scored by BM25 and the KNN. The normalization processor will normalize the score from different search results. In this case, the BM25 and the KNN score and combine the scores to finalize the doc IDs. And this would be returned to the user by the fetch phase. So let's create the search pipeline. So in this case, it's going to be the normalization processor with the normalization and the combination technique. So once created, we will also set the search pipeline to the index that we have been using. So what's left is to run the hybrid search itself. So in this case, we have the lexical search and the neural search here. And we use the same model ID that we've been using. And this search result is a blend of both lexical and the neural search. We can also compare the search results like we did last time. So we compare the lexical search on the hybrid search, use the same model ID. And with the placeholder, we use the same text to perform the search and you can compare the search results. Once you're done, you can also undeploy the model once you no longer use them, of course, and you can also delete them once and for all this way. And for those of you who would like to use the UI instead of API, you could also use the open search flow. So as of today, we have these many templates. So thank you. My name is Ashwat and good luck with your search use cases. You got open search.